and it's very exciting. We're going to have him up in the near future to break down Saudi Arabia and other big issues that he covers at his website. Uh, but today we're just going to focus on earthquakes, seismic events, and geopolitical operations. Stan Deo is really an amazing individual. I'm not going to go over his engineering background, working in secret uh, top security clearance operations with the FBI and uh, with other federal agencies. Uh, he's developed solar-related uh, systems for Earth's climate. He's in, been involved in a lot of Tesla-type research. Um, he's done a lot of marine uh, projects and marine architecture that are classified, uh, advanced propulsion engineering. But what he really does, he's known for, is accurately with um, unorthodox systems predict seismic activity. And he's on record on his website and here last year predicting a lot of new seismic activities across the United States in areas that's not traditionally. New York, Oklahoma, Texas. I got a headline here. In fact, it's in my stack. Uh, they had earthquakes up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area again um, just in the last day. Like, I know it's here in my stack, but I'll never find it, guys. Just Here it is. Here, yeah, yeah, this is in Oklahoma. Swarm of earthquakes strike parts of northern Oklahoma, but even again up in North Texas, they've had some tremors. What's going on? A swarm of earthquakes has shaken parts of Alfalfa County in northern Oklahoma. The U.S. Geological Survey says four earthquakes have been recorded, and these are big ones uh, for that area of the country, around Cherokee and Helena since late Wednesday, including a magnitude 4.3 quake with five miles east-northwest of Cherokee at 9.08 a.m. The Sheriff's Department uh, has, has been reporting that there's been some other quakes as well. Uh, let, I want to go to our guest to talk about this uh, and to break down uh, how he basically predicts these and what he thinks is causing it. Is it the pole moving? We know it's been moving at rapid rates and may even move faster. Uh, what's going on with Yellowstone? Is there really, because I've read this and talked to some folks that say it is there, that most U.S. Geological Survey seismologists are fully government funded. And or they work at a university that's government funded and they've been told if you say anything alarming, which we saw a few years ago about the Yellowstone could be getting ready to go, that you'll be fired or never see the light of day again. Stan, is that true? A and then B, just just give us what you think is most important first off. Well, Alex, as far as uh, what the, the muzzle is on the USGS, that has been a matter of public record, so oh, gosh, probably five years ago. But um, I have had a chance to talk to a couple of witnesses that were actually at Yellowstone. And uh, when, when people were told the geologist to keep their mouth shut or they would be fined or imprisoned, and that was probably two years ago that I uh, got the phone calls to uh, tell me about that. That's right. And they use the argument, don't they, that, well, this is government equipment, and so this is classified, even though it's not a classified agency. Uh, yeah, look, they even told the truck drivers that were bringing the equipment in. They weren't even USGS personnel. Don't you talk? They made them sign the little non-disclosure agreement, you know, fine or and or imprisonment. Um, and look, uh, the, the data I got from one uh, geologist there that actually is one of those that was told to be quiet and pass the information out through uh, friends uh, is this. Um, they are monitoring all kinds of sites that they're not showing on the USGS um, earthquake plot for Yellowstone. And there is so much data being gathered out of Yellowstone uh, by the government at the moment that they're having to use a supercomputer just to analyze the data from, you know, second to second to try to forecast as best they can when there will be an event there. And whether it's a major eruption or whether it's a magma flow or a, a toxic gas release, all those are important to consider and to prepare for. But you know as well as I do, with the internet like it is, with the spread of news and rumors, uh, a lot of the times without people fact-checking, that should a hint of this come from official sources, it could create panic and hurt the economy even farther. You know, <laughs> I don't know how much farther you can go. The well, for those that don't know, uh, the AP and others have reported USGS says earthquake hazard greater than previously thought. So, I mean, this is being admitted, but as you said, they then muzzled them. Well, look, you know, I've said this uh, with you before, Alex. Uh, if we play the game where, say, you or I were in charge of the country and uh, we wanted to uh, protect the country and its people and the people from each other, if we were to come out and say the end of the world is coming tomorrow, we think, 
but we're not sure, then as an official announcement, people would panic. They would go out uh, shooting each other, rioting, and that kind of stuff, looting. If we announced the possibility, not from the White House, but from unofficial leaks that occur across the country, then these leaks are picked up by people who watch the news and watch for behind the scenes colors, you know, what's happening, and they spread it through the community slowly without causing panic. Now, I think you and I would do that uh, to, to keep the infrastructure intact in case we're wrong. Because, you know, even with supercomputers, you can't really accurately forecast earthquakes and volcanoes to the minute, the What's day. What's the best science on the last three big eruptions? In fact, guys, you can search um, last Yellowstone super eruptions, and then they go back over the thousands of years uh, and the hundreds of thousands of millions of years. And it shows the uh, areas, I mean, usually it covers more than half the country. Uh, and changes the climate for a long period of time. What are the estimates on what the, the eruption uh, w would be like this time, and how bad could it be? Well, they've been revising their thoughts on it, uh, that it might not be 600,000 years between eruptions. There might be a 1,000-year window and that sort of thing. So they're, they're being very flexible between 1,000 and 600,000 years for the next one. But they do all agree that we're in the zone now for another eruption statistically from Yellowstone. And, and how many super volcanoes are there on the Earth? Because it couldn't just be this one going off. No, there's there's this one. There's uh, another undersea one. Um, uh, gee, I can't remember which ocean it's in, but there's there, the third one is in North Island, New Zealand at Lake Taupo. And we've been watching that too. Um, in fact, a number of people have. It's, it's going to be so big that uh, it's the Yellowstone of the Southern Hemisphere. I think the other one is in the Northern Hemisphere and under the sea somewhere. And I, I think it's Iceland, isn't it? Yeah. We won't, well, we Iceland, it Iceland, Iceland's certainly doing some wonderful things as far as magma and, and volcanoes. Iceland's actually raising up out of the uh, the seabed because the ice pack that covers uh, the, uh, the, gla the glaciers that cover the volcanoes there is melting. So Iceland is starting to rise up and you can see more magma activity uh, along that whole long fissure in the Atlantic Ridge that goes underneath Iceland. Yeah, and they're blaming so, yeah. it on global warming when the volcanologists know it's because of the magma. Well, well, yeah, and, and the other thing is, why is the northern uh, pole region, why is that warming up and melting ice like rapidly in Greenland and Iceland, and yet the south pole is gaining ice? Now, that's not a global phenomenon. It is the transfer of electricity in the Earth's system from the south pole up to the north pole, transferring the heat from the south pole up to the north pole, warming the north pole there, but Cooling and I've talked pole. to astrophysicists who you know, got multiple degrees, and they say that is indeed what's happening. And NASA admits the pole's starting to move. Is that connected? Yes. Uh, in fact, NASA did release last year really high-resolution images of the magnetic fields inside the Earth. And they show in the northern hemisphere two north poles and two south poles down here underneath it. And that tells us that the north and south pole is really two sets that are splitting and rotating at the moment. Um, and, and this is a pole reversal, a magnetic pole reversal, and that is generating part of the, the climate changes we're seeing all over the world. Now, expanding on that, I'm looking at your breakdowns, I'm looking at the USGS, I'm looking at the Japanese numbers. I'm just a layman, not an expert like you, but, but clearly, isn't volcanic activity and seismic activity exponentially increasing right now? Well, it certainly is increasing. Uh, I haven't uh, plotted the, to see whether it's exponential, but it's rapidly increasing. Uh, we get notices here, Holly and I, daily, uh, you know, by the hour from USGS. And over the last few weeks, we just noted uh, lots and lots of earthquakes all over the planet, uh, more than we would normally see. So, yes, uh, it is rapidly uh, increasing in numbers. Now, I remember you were on about a year ago, and you said you thought there'd be more seismic activity in places that hadn't been. You talked about the fault line through Oklahoma and, and, and uh, into uh, Missouri and other areas. We don't have the staff or the crew to go back and pull that. I know it's on your site. You did say that. Why were you predicting this increased seismic activity? Because now it's happening right where you said it would, but also in New York and Illinois. I mean, what's going on? Well, what I uh, use to 
to kind of guesstimate uh, what would be happening rapidly is the fact that there were a lot of um, sinkholes all over the planet appearing. And these, uh, to me, uh, it fits in with my hypothesis that the Earth is expanding again. It, it has expanded uh, before uh, by uh, as much as 25% of its old diameter. Now it's starting to stretch the surface and put increasing pressures on tectonic plates, particularly in the United States. And if you can, I don't know whether you can push a button with your producer can, but if you go to my uh, website, to the show images page at the top row, right in the middle, I've got today's snap of the USGS plot of earthquakes in Oklahoma. We'll put it up, standeo.com, D-E-Y-O, standeo.com. We'll put that on screen. Go ahead. Okay. And so what it does is that in the middle row at the top, it shows the earthquakes today. Uh, sorry about that. It's okay. That have come come down from Oklahoma down through Dallas and down underneath San Antonio. And if you look at that uh, that image I've got there, it shows that there is some kind of a geological formation that seems to the, the earthquake seem to be following that line. And so then if you look at the next picture on the top row on the right, which is a geographic map of Texas, you'll see. Uh, I've drawn a yellow line with a black outline showing where those earthquakes have been happening in Texas. It's right you know, down the fault line, and that right fault line fault goes line. right through Austin, Texas. In fact, I'm sitting right in the middle of it right now. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is that whole area connects to uh, an area over into the New Madrid fault line. Um, if you go to the second row, first picture, where it says New Madrid fault region, and uh, go on there to... I'm just going to tell you which line to go to. One, two, three. Uh, this one shows it the best, I think. Click on the third line first picture, which has kind of a white line, diagonal line cutting through it. And it, it shows um, the the shaded area on East Texas, right up into New Madrid. It's all kind of connected in that weak part of the uh, well, of where the United States should have split when the continents were splitting, but it didn't quite do it. And New Madrid is you know, a leftover of that. But I saw that if we keep stretching that, that it would create stresses along the edge of that um, that plain, that coastal plain that goes up uh, toward Dallas and Austin. Uh, and that's that's exactly what's happening. Uh, there is a uh, there is a um, mm, uh, a safe zone, kind of a shield, if you wish, that. Um, if you, uh, I'm just trying to see if I've got that. I don't, I don't have that map up there at the moment, I don't think. But anyway, this shield is a line showing where earthquakes occur from the edge of Canada, you know, on the west side, all the way to the east side, down into the Oklahoma region. And that is called a shield. And uh, inside that area, north of that area, there's not many earthquakes, but south, east, and west of that, toward the coastal regions, there is. And that's what uh, I used to kind of forecast what I thought would be happening here in the United States. Um, Break that yeah. down because you did uh, uh, predict that and, and, and now it's happening. What do you think is going to come next now? Well, I think that we may see some more earthquakes uh, start to form from Oklahoma City eastward toward Little Rock, Arkansas, into the New Madrid fault line, somewhere in that weakness area. There, In fact, if you look at that middle picture uh, at the top row uh, of the... Uh, the main page, the show images page, you'll see a lighter region which shows a depression in the, the landform of the United States coming from Oklahoma City over toward Little Rock. And there is a fault line there that's not been very active, but I suspect that that will be an area we will see some earthquakes here in the next few months. As Boy, Oklahoma has just seen, it looks like a hundred. How, how many? That looks like a lot. Uh, that's a lot of points. Well, yeah, and that we think is due primarily to fracking, where they're injecting water into gas and oil wells, um, you know, to, to bring it back up to the surface. And we, we do that here in Colorado as well, but they're doing, they're doing so much here that I suspect that what they're trying to do is relieve seismic pressure in smaller amounts in that region to avoid a massive earthquake. Uh, you know, where the pressure builds up and doesn't release until it's too big. Uh, now, I know the Israelis different. patented systems to use explosives, they believe, with computer models to stop earthquakes. That's right. That's right. Can you tell us about that? 
Well, I actually uh, was in the middle of one of those over in West Australia uh, years ago, back in the late 70s. Uh, at that time, I was seeing classified uh, telexes or, you know, coming from Pine Gap. But um, it, the United States sent a team over to Western Australia, north of Perth, into the mining fields to start detonating along minor fault lines with TNT. They, they had the teams out doing it. They were tributary fault lines to a major fault line that ran from uh, up the coast above Perth down through Perth. And they were predicting a 7.5 to 8 uh, uh, Richter earthquake in that area, which would shake Perth to the ground because most of its buildings had not been built to earthquake code before 78. Now, to, uh, to mitigate that, they were, they were relieving the pressure on the main fault line by blasting the smaller ones and letting the pressure equalize out. Now, the Israelis have come up with a better system, as I understand. They drill, I, I don't seen, they? I, I think they do go down deeper, yeah. No. And uh, because when you're, when you're blasting at the surface, it's not as good as getting down, you know, like um, a kilometer or so, to, so the shock wave does what you want it to. Amazing. It's so fascinating, not just from the perspective of, ooh, this is scary. We're on a planet in space with molten lava just a couple miles under us. I mean, it's just so amazing. We'll be back with Stan Deo. I'm Alex Jones. StanDeo.com. We're at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Spread the word. This is important. They want to start war with Russia even more. I mean, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Stan Deo is our guest. I want to get his take on things that are geopolitically happening right now uh, as well after he finishes up with earthquakes. But we got to get him on more than once a year. Stan Deo is a really interesting, really informative guy. StanDeo.com. We're going to go back to him here in just a moment. First off, um, I was thinking about the month of February. And we've got super male vitality, super female vitality. It's not a herbal Viagra. I mean, we don't advertise it as that but obviously they've got estrogen mimickers uh in a lot of the food a lot of the plastics were being bombarded with it this stuff was designed by dr group cold press the purest ingredients i think it's 16 ingredients in the male i think it's 18 in the female that just supercharge your normal glands this does not mimic testosterone or other key compounds it simply gets your body to release it according to dr group's research all I know is it works like a charm. Back when I was uh, playing football some in high school and in college, I never took any illegal stuff, but I went to GNC and got some of the herbal Yohimbi and stuff, and it made me a little bit bigger, but made me feel crazy and feel terrible and have hot flashes. So I never stayed on that stuff more than like a week. Super male, I can just take twice a day, just I, more energy, I'm more aggressive, I feel great, uh, my libido's off the chart, and I mean, off, I mean I'm... Worse than I was when I was 18. I mean, it, it's it's amazing. And similar formulas that aren't as good cost $100. This cost uh, half of that. And then you got 20% off in the month of February on super male and super female vitality. The perfect gift on Valentine's Day. We can ship this out in a day or two if you order it so we can, uh, you know, order it. You'll get it for Valentine's Day or, or order it and, you know... Uh, but it, it's not about the libido situation. That just goes with it. It's the energy. It's uh, I've lost weight. Uh, I've got more stamina. I'm just in a great mood. And I've never run into anything herbal that does anything like this. And it's because we don't put the cheap trash in there that just increases testosterone. It, it doesn't do that or mimics it. These herbs just get your body to, just get your glands excited. I'll, I'll t and there's nothing like the real thing. There's nothing like good old-fashioned real stuff that's in you. Infowarslife.com, 20% off. We also uh, have the special where you can get a bottle of Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Booster that's got just a whole bunch of well-known herbs that supercharge uh, the body's own natural immunities. But these are also high-quality but low price ones. So we can offer it uh, for $14.95, even though leading competitors are $30 to $40 to $50 for something similar. $14.95 for a high-quality but good value product. Or get two bottles of Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2 and get a free bottle of Ancient Defense to try it out absolutely free. And during these winter months, folks are crazy if they don't try to boost their immune system with vitamin C, sunlight, 
uh, having a good time, having a good attitude, praying, all the studies show that, uh, getting your guts flushed out, getting that healthy with the Oxy Powder, available at InfoWarsLife.com. And I want to thank you all for your support. When you buy these products, you're not just getting high-quality products at very affordable competitive prices. Uh, you are funding a savage operation. I mean, I'm just not going to pull punches. I'm crazed. I hate tyrants. I'm kind of natural. I mean, you read back to folks that fought King George or people that fought other tyrants. I mean, they were more crazed than I am. I'm, I'm a wimp compared to these people. And they were so angry, they'd haul guns 100 miles through the snow with no, with no shoes with a trail of blood behind them. Because back then, shoes, you know, broke down in slush. They were leather-bottomed. I mean, I couldn't do that. I mean, I, so, so I'm nothing compared to our ancestors. And compared to most people, I'm a crazed Tasmanian, you know, devil or something. Well, no, I'm not. I'm into interesting things. I want freedom. I want to sell people high-quality products because I'm a moral person. But not, if I was immoral, I'd want it to be the best stuff out there. So you keep buying it. I can't believe, I'm going to go back to our guest, now in the last 10 years being into supplements and, 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 and working with Longevity because they are a high-quality, trusted company with InfoWarsHealth.com, and then finally coming out with my own line, that, that there are so few other really reputable groups out there. I go to these biggest manufacturers that have, you know, high quality stuff that we can get. And they say, we've never seen anyone put this much high quality stuff in something like DNA Force. I mean, we love what you're doing, but you're just beyond the quality of anything we've ever heard with what you're doing. Most of these big names, slick bottles, beautiful models, you know, national TV ads, They'll put like a dollar worth of product in a bottle that costs 30 something cents and then spend $5 a bottle on marketing and sell it to you for 50 bucks. DNA Force has over $50 of product in each bottle. And then we mark it up. The average stuff, we average have about a 50 to 100% markup. The average, the industry standard is a seven fold markup. Seven times. That's crazy. So that's why we're the best. We are the best. I only promise you the best. Infowarslife.com. That's why we're turning heads big time. You can also call to ask any questions or order over the phone. 888-253-3139. Uh, you can, uh, again, go to standao.com and find out about all of his very interesting work in black projects and more. But Stan, thanks for being on hold during that break and plug. Let's go. And, and, of course, people can find all your books as well there and a lot more. But before we go any further... Let's get back into earthquakes, hit the most important points. I've asked a lot of the questions now. You kind of cover some of the other areas of what's happening with the Earth's um, crust, what's happening inside of it, the pole shift, all of these things uh, that are just out of this world but are really happening. And then let's get into your view. Geopolitically, it seems like all hell's breaking loose. And I, and I know you're a smart guy and have a lot of contacts on that front. What's happening? Stan Deo. Okay, first on the earthquake situation, while we were having the break there, I uploaded an image of something I think you, you and your listeners will find very, very interesting. It's on the fracking sites in the United States, a map published uh, by the industry April last year. Fourth row from the bottom on the right-hand side, it says fracking USA. And if you click on that map, all the green dots you see are where they are fracking into oil wells or gas uh, wells, etc. And when you look at the earthquakes today through Dallas down through San Antonio and beyond, you will see that to the right of that, they are fracking the heck out of it all the way over into Louisiana. And up at Oklahoma City, you will see they've started, not, not only they got fracking all around Oklahoma City and north of it, you will see that there is a finger of fracking going out to the right through Arkansas, just like I was telling about along that fault line, right into the New Madrid fault line. And in West Texas, there's a whole cluster out there. Don't know why they're doing that so much uh, unless it is for oil and gas. But these others in the in the plains of Texas, the coastal plain region, and in Louisiana, you know, and uh, part of Mississippi, that tells you that they're, they're, they're taking a great risk pulling it out there because those are very uh, uh, well, laced areas with fault lines because of various activities. And by the way, have. five years ago, I heard you on Coast to Coast AM. I'm, I'm not tooting your horn. It's just no brag, just fact. I heard you with George Norrie saying you believed fracking was connected to earthquakes. And now, top scientists agree in the last year, we have an ABC News headline uh, that uh, fracking is connected to the earthquakes in Texas. 
Yeah, yeah. Look, I, it's uh, it's a, a minor victory to to be saying that. I'm sure that that uh, the geologists knew it at the time, but it took this long for them to be able to say it publicly. I think without getting in too much trouble. I interrupted. Please continue. Okay. Well, that that's all. I I just wanted to show you that uh, on that fracking map that it's quite interesting that they're doing it on fault lines uh, and certainly the the coastal plains of uh, Texas uh, and into Louisiana, Mississippi. These were all lowered and damaged by the Chicxulub meteor impact in the Gulf of Mexico. You know, long long time ago which shoved up shockwaves up into Texas. So it already is a weak area. And I just, uh, you know, I don't know whether they're weighing their, their, their need for the gas and oil from those fields against uh, uh, trying to avoid any subsidence or earthquakes in the area. I just don't know. But that map, when I look at it, it just uh, stands out in your face that there's something big going on in those areas. Anyway, that's that's earthquakes. Uh, what are other hot areas in the world or in the United States for seismic activity? Well, uh, we have, um, let's see here. Let me see if I can just pull it up. Alaska, of course, is, is always ongoing. Um, the one that I watch the most is right up near Eureka, California, off the coast. There's a long ridge that comes in out of the North Pacific. It's called the Mendocino Ridge or fault line, but it's a ridge. And as it joins into California at Eureka, it's at the very foot of something called the Juan de Fuca Plate. And people, geologists, have been watching this for years in comparison to all of the other fault line locations around the entire uh, Pacific Rim, you know, the Ring of Fire. And the only area that has built up this much pressure, uh, you know, here at uh, like, like a Richter 9 or plus earthquake, is right here at the foot where... The Mendocino Ridge comes into Eureka. And this is what you said last year, is this is the only area in this big ring of fire that hasn't yet triggered. That's right. It's over 55 years overdue uh, by their estimates. And so that there alone tells you that, oh, uh, maybe they're not quite that accurate. So it's a guess. And it is. And I, in their defense, it is the best guess they can make. What would happen if it fully triggered? We're talking about an, uh, an eight, a nine? Yeah, you are talking about a nine. And... Uh, that would produce tsunamis along the coast there. Of course, uh, it, would, it would hit Japan later, uh, you know, a few days later. And we've later been so tsunami. blessed. People go, oh, that'll never happen here. I know folks that have been in some of these LA earthquakes that are a lot, lot smaller, where highways collapse, hundreds die. Uh, I mean, folks, how many hundreds of thousands died in the tsunamis a decade ago or, or, or less, I guess, eight, nine years ago? Uh, people, I mean, this is happening all over the world. We've been very blessed not to be hit by what's hit Pakistan and Iraq and Iran and uh, all these other countries that just get devastated. I mean, I've seen numbers of hundreds of thousands getting killed in earthquakes in places like Pakistan. You know, Alex, you chose the word blessed, uh, and I, I do agree. Uh, it is by the blessing of our Creator, God, uh, that we uh, have been uh, spared these things. But when we pull away from God like we're doing now, due to the administration, you know, and all the changes they've made, uh, we can expect these things to fall upon us like judgments. You know, it, it's the blessing is being removed, I'm sure. You know, it is really true historically that when governments do really bad things, e even the pagans believe that if the government got real bad, that, that, that you know, they'd have earthquakes and volcanoes and all the rest of it. And uh, you know, the Bible says that, and people always poo-poo it. Uh, I just know that uh, it's uh, pretty interesting what's happening right now. Well, let's watch what happens in the Middle East. We can segue from here to politics, because if the United States is heavily involved, which it is, in the... the uh, partitioning, the dividing of Israel for a peace treaty between, you know, Palestine and Israel and, uh, you, know, you know, the rest of the Arab nations. If it is divided, we can expect our country physically to be divided by earthquakes and damaging you know, geological events like volcanoes, etc. And you're saying yeah. because that's in Revelations or Daniel? Or you, you no, I'm just saying we've, we've observed that, that uh, whenever we do something to hurt Israel, uh, something of um, uh, a measured response comes from God to our country, you know, a proportionate response. So wait for it. When we hurt Israel, we're going to get hurt. And this administration, I mean, gosh, I, I tell you what, if you go to the, uh, the my show image page, second row down, right in the middle, I have a picture of Patrick Stewart, you know, Captain Kirk in the, in the movie they made, um, Star Trek First Contact. And he's saying there, this far and no farther, you know, they draw the line. And that's like in the Alamo. 
the line must be drawn here. We have got to stop this administration. Somehow, we must draw that line now. And I, I can't... I can't stress that enough. Well, there is. I mean, even for folks that don't like some of the things Israel's up to sometimes, they're different governments. Yeah. What's yeah. going on with arming all the radical Islamists, turning them loose all over Africa, the Middle East, trying to overthrow Egypt, and then, and then, and then criticizing Israel? I mean, that is what the White House has been doing. That's just insane. Well, the White House is uh, funding, um, you know, uh, the enemies of Israel. And uh, uh, even though... You say that there are good Muslims and then there are terrorist radical Muslims. When you fund those countries, it funds the radical segment more than it does the, the, the people, the Muslims of those countries that really just average everyday people. In Iran, we have to watch what the administration here does with funding uh, Qasem Soleimani, General Soleimani. That's Solomon in the, their local language. Because he is moving against ISIS and is therefore, quote unquote, a friend of the United States because the enemy, my enemy, is, is my friend. And so the United States is helping Iran, Qasim, uh, Qasim uh, Soleimani, against ISIS. And everybody's supposed to applaud when ISIS gets crunched. And I think they'll get crunched. And the, the guy in the Middle East, the military genius that will do this and is doing it, is General Qasim Soleimani. And so America's funding of those activities there and in Africa, uh, it, you know, it allegedly is to get rid of ISIS, but it is a betrayal of the United States. Well, there's got to be a larger master plan because criminals in our government and in NATO helped arm the Syrian Free Army, which basically is ISIS now. Saudi Arabia is involved funding it, too, but claims they're fighting it. There's a double game going on here, from my view. What do you think? Oh, yeah, look, this is a chess move, and it's not the final play at all. But the reason I chose that picture from um, Star Trek of Captain Kirk saying, you know, this far, no farther, he was referring to an invasion from off-world by aliens onto the, United, onto the, the, uh, the, the world to conquer humanity, you know, and to enslave it. And I think the end game, look, further than we are right now at local politics, look at the global picture, and I've said this time and time again for decades now, we are going to have an official uh, meeting, uh, release, um, you know, announcement of friendly aliens coming to Earth with super technology, and this is according to biblical prophecy as well. And this is what well, you do before. see the Pope and others coming out saying they think there's other life forms out there and all the Hollywood movies. Now, there's a Project Bluebeam to have fake alien landings. Uh, but, I mean, you're saying you think the end game is something like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going toward a global dictatorship, but it will be like the movie, uh, the, the miniseries V that uh, Kenneth Johnson uh, produced in the mid-70s. The friendlies come looking like humans with their spaceships, park all over the major cities. They have ships that are a mile wide, you know, just hanging in the air over cities. And our, our scientists are kind of just, you know, dumbfounded. This is impossible, but there it is. And they come in peace, they say. We mean you no harm. We will give you cures for cancer and energy and this and that. So people suck it up. And now then, you know that they, they had uh, human skins over reptilian bodies. It well, I know deception. Hillary probably is actually a demonic 14-foot <laughs> Easter bunny underneath her. Uh, yeah. I, I, I know the elite running things act like they're aliens from deep space come to enslave us. I know that. It's kind of a, instead of taking a power nap, I'll listen to a couple of songs. A little classical music, a little George Strait, a little Great White. Standeo.com, our guest. We're going to be back up soon on his yeah. political worldview of what's really going on. But he just hit the hardcore issue. Why is it when somebody, an engineer or scientist, says, hey, this is demonic, you know, that's what's happening. People are like, oh, that's kooky, that's weird. But wait, 80% of America, 82% says they're Christian, believe in a God and the devil. Well, we're on a planet in space. Who is the devil? What is the devil that wants to kill, steal, and destroy and become God and mutate the genetics of the planet? Everything the Bible says, but it's not taught in the churches because they're basically government run now. We're seeing prophecies fulfilled and look, if you're an atheist and don't believe in spiritual things and other dimensions, which mathematics has proven, and Einstein went from being an atheist to being, you know, someone who believed there was a God, because how can you do these equations and then not see the fingerprints there? But there's also a spirit of evil. But even in a Carl Jungian way, 
there are archetypes, and humans build a satanic archetype that always ends in giant black pyramids with human sacrifice. And every ancient culture believed all this was going on. I don't go there because people won't believe there's FEMA camps when I have the congressional documents. Uh, so they're not going to get into other things that are fantastical. But clearly, folks, we're not in Kansas anymore, and we never were. We're two-thirds of the way out on the spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy. And so, Stan, next time you come on, we'll get you into the heavier, more esoteric stuff. But the elite do believe, at Skull and Bones, they believe they're worshiping angels, goddesses, from space. Uh, that's been in New York Times best-selling books by people that broke in there, basically. Uh, they don't call the Bushes crazy for worshiping entities. At Bohemian Grove, they were worshiping entities when I was there. So whether they're space aliens, entities, whatever, or even if they're not real, our elite believe they're real, but you're saying they may fake this as the great delusion that we're biblically told about. Absolutely. They're going to come as the good guys when the Bible says, beware the first lot coming as messengers of light. That's almost a literal translation. We got a few so, minutes in this segment and one more five-minute segment with you. Get, I mean, get into some of your larger view because you know, you've been accurate predicting earthquakes. You're a smart guy, did a lot of secret operations that have been documented. I mean, what, uh, what, what made you form this cosmology, uh, just researching it? Well, yes. Back in 1969, I fell ill with a, a bacterial infection that nearly killed me. In fact, I had the out-of-body near-death experience. And after I came back into my body from that, I had a lot of stuff in my mind that uh, told me to eventually write the book, The Cosmic Conspiracy, to expose this, this great deception. By the way, that was a super now. worldwide bestseller. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. How Still many copies selling. of that did you sell? Well, I last count a couple years ago, a quarter of a million copies, which is just for, for an amateur guy, that's a lot of books. Well, I know, but and it got picked up and put into other serials and things. I just know it was in magazines, you name it. Yep, We're going to come yep. right back. I'm going to have you back up soon for a full hour on the Cosmic Conspiracy, uh, your view on that. Um, that's a book I heard Bob Dylan likes. Give us a little preview of what you're going to cover next time you're on. Well, I suppose the most important thing will be the uh, developing situation in the Middle East and how it would uh, potentially relate to announcing the alien presence here. I, I know that uh, for years, uh, a number of us, you know, in the radio industry here and in the uh, news industry have poo-pooed the idea of UFOs and aliens. And anybody that talked about that for real should be wearing a little tinfoil hat, you know. But now that things are becoming quite intense in the world, just as I predicted in the Cosmic Conspiracy and in the, in the TV shows, I'll be talking about why the, 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 the world events are going where they are. Move ahead a bunch of chess moves from where we are now. And uh, I want to warn people in a long discussion saying, look, here's what you watch for and here's what to avoid. And I base a lot of that on what's in the biblical prophecies about this time. They've been so accurate and are, are becoming even more accurate now, happening in for our eyes, that it's going to be easy for me to point people to this and say, here's what you do do, and here's what you don't do if you want to get through this and, as the Bible says, have everlasting life. You know, uh, Colonel Craig Roberts, good friend of mine, I want to get him back on. He died of cancer, uh, t surgery and colon cancer for, for 10 minutes. I mean, you, right. you know, unless you're putting ice, there's no way you're going to come back from that. He came back from that, had the whole experience of the portal, the angel, uh, the, a decision being made. He was given all the data sent back. And there's yeah. even mainline, as you know, studies and reports, government reports. We can do a whole show on this where people uh, who aren't even Christians, who are in African tribes or, or who are in New Guinea, when they die and come back, it's the same thing. This is real. I mean, this is going on. Absolutely. What happened I, to you briefly when you died? Well, I, I, I left the body. I shot through the roof in my room and uh, out into a very uh, smooth, velvet-like darkness. And off to my right, as I was moving through this darkness toward a light way out there, off to my right, there were a bunch of like little theaterettes, uh, like maybe 50, 60, even 100, uh, all showing events in my life up to that point where I had hurt someone by actions or deed. And then they would go a little bit further showing how that affected that person's life down the road. It was kind of like judging myself. And as I was moving through this silky darkness, pieces of me seemed to be washed out by this invisible fluid like, like dirt clods. 
and they would fall behind me in a puff of smoke. And I would notice I was losing a, a negative emotion like greed or hate, et cetera, et cetera. So you were being and, sanctified? Well, I was I was sitting in judgment, uh, you know, nodding my head, saying, yeah, OK, I did that. that. You know, I wasn't embarrassed or anything. I was just looking analytically at the things I'd done wrong, what it had happened, what it had caused. And I even got to see a little bit into the future. And then when that all stopped and I was, you know, uh, able to just think without watching all those screens at once, which I could do easily at that point. My mind was bigger and I could know about the universe. And I said, well, how does it work? And how do flying saucers work? And all kinds of questions. But when I squeezed back into my body, it was like getting into a tiny little shoe and pieces of what I had learned out there seemed to drop off the side. It was fragments. Yeah, and they came back later in dream states over the next, you know, probably seven to ten years. Well, that's the same universal thing going back thousands of years since writing was invented. And, and same thing with Roberts. He was in a dark room, and the angel had his hand on him. He was, like, just being instantly shown all the good things he'd done, bad things he's done. And, there was, and it was like, and then the, the decision was made, just like, you know, in the movie, send you back, back. It's just unbelievable. Right. It's so real. Right. It is. It really is. We live outside the body. It's amazing. And the, and the enemy knows that and tries to keep us from ever being aware of it. Standeo.com. We'll talk to you soon, sir. Thanks, Alex. Night, night. Or Thanks for all the time. Good well, afternoon. I know sir. you're usually on at night, yeah. All right, there yeah. you go, Standeo. Coming back with your phone call. Stay with us.